So now I'm going to talk about taking in the good. In a profound sense, much of what we are, what the self is, is built up from what we remember, the slowly accumulating internalization of lived experience as it slowly, slowly, slowly sifts and sinks in. Now there are two kinds of memory, explicit and implicit. Explicit memory consists of recollections of specific events, like the time you had to get some stitches. Implicit memory, that includes the emotions, models of relationships, and the sense of the world. Implicit memory is different from remembering ideas or events. This kind of a memory is in your gut. It's visceral, it's felt, and it's rooted in the fundamental and ancient reptile and early mammal structures of your brain. Now, most memory is implicit, even though explicit memory kind of gets most of the attention. And the self is built up mainly of implicit memories. The inner atmosphere of your mind that Richard was talking about a moment ago, what living feels like, depends greatly on what is stored in your implicit memory. So a simple question gets very important. How can you make your implicit memories as good as possible? And the simple but profoundly effective answer is to consciously, deliberately help the brain register positive experiences. And that benefits you in many ways. For one, it starts to shift the internal emotional landscape in an increasingly positive direction. Second, it helps you develop more positive expectations and views of yourself and others and the future, developing healthy optimism, which has a lot of mental and physical health benefits. And then a third benefit is by taking in the good you gradually build up resources inside, including the sense of other people inside or parts of other people inside that are nurturing, encouraging, and forgiving. Now, all of this is not about flattering yourself or making up a rose-colored story about the world. It's about being in reality, about proportionality, about our sense of the world and our sense of ourself being consistent with the nature of the world and ourself. For example, imagine that life is a mosaic with 100 tiles. 80, 90 of them are really probably pretty great. Maybe five are kind of neutral and another five aren't so great. But if the mosaic of the tiles of your life is mostly good, and certainly if the mosaic of the tiles that makes you up as a person all the parts of you, including what's called the wholesome force of the good, if that mosaic is mostly good, shouldn't your sense of yourself and your sense of living be mostly good? But unfortunately, most of us have considerable resistance to savoring positive experiences, hanging out with them for a while, let alone helping them sink in and shift slowly but surely who we are over time in a positive direction. And because of this, it's really important to understand why taking in the good is so important, which is why I'm making these points so firmly. So how to do it? First, I'll explain the four steps it takes. It's really simple. Then we'll practice them with a meditation about some kind of positive experience. So here are the four steps. You know from school, and tons and tons of studies have corroborated this, that people remember something best when it's made as vivid as possible and then given heightened attention over an extended period. That's exactly how to register positive experiences in your implicit memory, and which will slowly but surely change the interior landscape of your mind and genuinely, truly, from the ground floor up, from the inside out, change literally 
the neural structures of your own brain. So here are the four simple steps. First, help positive events become positive experiences. There are a lot of ways to do this. You could do it by just paying attention to the good things in your world and the good things inside yourself, even more importantly. So often, good events roll by our eyes or good aspects of ourself roll by without us even noticing them. You could, if you like, set a goal each day to actively look for beauty in your world or signs of caring for you by others or good qualities within yourself. Another way to help events become experiences is to decide, just decide, to let yourself feel pleasure and be happy rather than feel guilty somehow about enjoying life. In particular, it's important to let go of any resistance, or as much as you can, to feeling good about yourself. In other words, you've earned the good times in your life. The meal is set before you. It's already paid for, and you might as well dig in. Honestly, I've seen so many people work so hard. They set a big banquet in front of themselves. They deserve it, and then they just sit there, or they eat it with a tiny, tiny little spoon. No, dig in. You are just being fair. You're just seeing the truth of things. You're not being vain or arrogant. Those are distortions. Another important step, or part of this first step, is to open up to the emotional and physically felt aspects of how you respond to positive events, since those more emotional and bodily elements are the pathway to actually experiencing things. A lot of us spend a lot of time in our head, you know, kind of living from the neck up. And one way for positive experiences to really register is for us to feel into the emotional and physical sensations of the experience itself. And then last, sometimes it's worth doing things deliberately to create positive experiences for yourself. You could deliberately bring to mind feelings of compassion or caring, or do something nice for another person, or just bring up a time and a place. For me, it's Tuolumne Meadows in Yosemite Park, a place where you feel contented, peaceful, and happy. So now, step two, once you've got this positive experience, kind of caught it like in your butterfly net, you want to extend the experience in time and space. Keep your attention on it so it lingers. Don't just jump onto something else. Notice any discomfort with staying with feeling good. The nature of working memory is that it's limited. It's a little bit like a piece of paper or a blackboard, and it holds what you put on it, but if new stuff comes in, it knocks off what used to be in working memory, which, unfortunately, was the positive experience that you're trying to help sink in. Instead, try to keep your attention with it. That alone is a kind of mindfulness practice. Further, in terms of space, let the experience fill your body with positive sensations and emotions. In a nutshell, relish it. Savor it. It's delicious. Third step, sense that the positive experience is kind of soaking into your brain and body, registering deeply in emotional memory. There are a lot of different ways people do this. Perhaps imagine that it's sinking into your chest and back. That one really particularly works for me. Or maybe imagine a treasure chest in your heart. I work a lot with kids, and this is, for me, one of the absolutely best ways to help a child, particularly one who's either a little anxious or a little spirited, because they tend to scoot on in life pretty quickly from important positive experiences. So you want to try to keep the positive experience sinking into you for 5 or 10 or even 20 seconds maybe even keep relaxing your body to absorb it, and that's going to really help those neurons to keep firing together so they wire together new positive experiences inside your brain. And now, for a bonus, this is an optional fourth step that you can use some of the time. And in the fourth step, what you do is you sense that the positive experience is going down deep, into old wounds and hurt places inside you and soothing them and filling them up again and replacing them over time with new positive feelings and views. And often, 
it works for the new positive experience to be kind of the targeted antidote to the old negative one. Like, for example, current new experiences of worth replacing old feelings of inadequacy. Or current feelings of being cared about and loved replacing old feelings of rejection or abandonment or even loneliness. Or a current sense of your strength replacing old feelings of being small or weak. Now, the replaced experience, the healed experience, could be from your adulthood, but usually the most valuable experiences to replace are from our youngest years. They are the tip of the root of the dandelion. In other words, when I was a kid, I used to weed a lot in the front yard of my house, and what I learned painfully about dandelions is if you don't get way down to the tip of the root, the darn things grow back. And that's what we want to do when we're healing something inside our own psychology. We want to get all the way down to the tip of the root, way down deep. And the deepest layers, the deepest, darkest places where those tips of the root live are usually in childhood experiences. And that's what you want to heal and pull to prevent the dandelion of upsets from growing back. The way to do this fourth step is really simple. All you have to do is have the new positive experience be prominent and in the foreground of your awareness at the same time that the old pain or unmet needs are dimly sensed in the background of awareness. The new experiences will gradually replace the old ones. You will not forget events that happened. You're not trying to falsify or make up history. But those old events will gradually lose their charge, their painful emotional associations, and their hold on you. This, by the way, as a longtime practicing psychologist, is the single most powerful way I know to authentically, from the inside out, based on what you've earned your, for yourself, help yourself genuinely change over time. Now, an important note. All four of these steps are to be used in daily life, not just in specific meditations. In other words, on the fly, two, three, four, five, or more times a day even. Each time, it's 5, 10, 20, 30 seconds. It's not that big a deal. It's private. It's internal. You could do it in a meeting. You can do it in a conversation. You can do it just before going to bed. But each time you do it, you are tossing one more brick into that hole in your heart. Even if it's a big hole, over time, with a few bricks every day of feeling strong and valuable and loved, you will gradually fill that hole. You'll actually notice a difference in a few days and certainly in a few weeks if you stick with this practice. And over a few months, you should experience a growing and fundamental shift in your experience of living. And over a few years, you should have a far-reaching movement in your character. Really.